Okay, today in this tutorial, we'll be going over how to install the Windows Linux subsystem. So why install the Windows Linux subsystem, you might be asking yourself. Well, uh, if you'd like to get comfortable learning a Windows, sorry, a Linux environment without leaving the comfort of Windows or without installing virtual machines uh, or secondary hardware, it's quite honestly the easiest way. Uh, so it's not true Linux in the sense where it's 100% emulating the full-on Linux desktop environment. However, it's fairly close. Uh, it has most of the tools that we'd be using as developers built in and some basic services. You do also get to choose through a couple distributions that you want to install. Uh, in this particular tutorial, we will be installing the latest version of Ubuntu. All right, let's begin. Open our trusty web browser, of course, just to make sure. So we want to go to our start menu. And we're going to type in Windows Features. And here we'll see Turn Windows Features On or Off. Give that a click. So we've presented with a list. Uh, there's quite a bit of miscellaneous stuff in here. Scroll down to the bottom. And here towards the bottom, so three from the bottom on my particular installation of Windows 10. Uh, that being said, this is required. You do need to have Windows 10. You will see Windows Subsystem for Linux. If we give that a check and press OK, Windows will do its thing and it will require a restart. So we'll go ahead and restart now. It'll finish installing its updates, and we will be back into our Explorer shell. There we go. All right, so that was fairly painless. Next thing we want to do is head over to the start menu again, type in store. We'll be going to the Microsoft Windows Store. From here, you can go search. Type in Ubuntu. So you have three options at the top here under apps. Now keep in mind books, movies, et cetera, et cetera. That's not what we're looking for. Uh, those are obviously publications to teach you Ubuntu. We are only interested in the actual application. So you have Ubuntu, Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, and Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. This right here is a alias for this one right here. So it's just the most recent version of Ubuntu. And LTS stands for lifetime support, uh, meaning that particular version of Ubuntu, so 18.404 specifically, uh, and 16.04 have extended support periods through Canical, which oversees Ubuntu. You can get more recent versions of Ubuntu, uh, so more cutting edge, but generally when you are in a server environment, you will want to go with what's most recent, but still considered stable and will receive security updates and uh, performance updates for years to come. So we'll click that. We look at the description. Ubuntu on Windows allows one to use Ubuntu terminal and run Ubuntu command line utilities, including bash, SSH, Git, apt, and many more. Uh, please note, Windows 10 S does not support this. So before installing Ubuntu on Windows, please run the control panel. We've done that step already. That was step one. Instead of the above steps, you can also set up a system by executing one of the following commands in the administrative PowerShell prompt. So if you are comfortable with PowerShell and you want to do this again on another computer, uh, rather than clicking through the Windows features, you can absolutely use PowerShell to do that. So we will go get. Uh, we do not want to sign in. Well, I don't want to sign in anyway. And we are now downloading Ubuntu. So Ubuntu is 214 megs. Microsoft servers are fairly quick, so that was quite instant. So if I go to launch after it's done, 
It's going to say installing. This may take a few minutes. Let's hope it's not too many minutes. Slowly wait. So one of the things it mentioned that you can do is SSH. We have been using an application called Putty to SSH. Uh, there is nothing wrong with Putty. It's a very acceptable product. However, if you are a fan of a little bit of a nicer looking terminal, uh, small things such as anti-aliasing on the text looks a little bit better, this option is generally preferred. It is also and most importantly, a true open SSH variant, uh, meaning if you use private or public key pairs to do key-based authentication with SSH, you do not have to take the extra step you would with PuTTY to transferring it to a format that it deals with. Still installing. While we wait, another feature of Windows I'd recommend turning on is use developer features. So if I click start, type in developer, there's two options here, use developer features or for developer settings. Uh, they're actually going to go to the same window. So that gives us a couple options. We have Microsoft Store apps. That's the default. So this only allows us to install apps on the Microsoft Store. We have sideload apps that allows us to install third-party universal Windows apps without Microsoft signing them. And then we have developer mode, and that basically gives us the ultimate control. Uh, you do get a nice little pop-up warning you that basically you're going to circumvent some of the protections enabled by Microsoft, so use at your own risk. So we have enabled the device portal, uh, not really applicable for us, but if you were doing remote diagnostics, that's good. Device discovery, so make your device visible to USB connections and your local network. File explorer, remote desktop, and PowerShell. So enabling those will basically give you some additional functionality within Windows. Let's go back. And we are still installing Ubuntu. Oh, there we go. So now it wants a username. Uh, so if you are coming from the Raspberry Pi, you're used to the default username being given to you, which is Pi. In this situation, however, we do get to pick our own. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put mine. Of course, it's going to ask for a password. confirmation of said password. Password is updated successfully. So now we are logged into our .NET VM and we are provided a WSL shell. If I look at the processes, I am limited to this shell. However, if I go look at HTOP, it does let me know that I am using all the cores available to this virtual machine. So as an added bonus, the default terminal that's provided to you uh, in regards to WSL is the same terminal that you would see if you had run the command prompt. So they had recently beefed up their virtual terminals. They support quite a few extra things, such as uh, scrolling, colors, et cetera, et cetera. However, it's still not the best option. So what you can do is get a program, I'll just close out of that. By the way, if you do want to get back to uh, WSL, it is installed as if it is a program. So if we type in Ubuntu, we see trusted Microsoft store app Ubuntu. 
We can go ahead and pin that to the start menu and then even pin that to the taskbar. So now we're always just a click away from Linux. Uh, earlier we had mentioned that you can use SSH here. So for example, I can simply go SSH um, pi at, let's say Splinter. And here we are, SSH into Pi. All right, get out of that. So we're gonna open up our web browser and we're going to go to HTTPS colon backslash backslash github.com backslash M-I-N T-T-Y backslash W-S-L T-T-Y. So min T-T-Y, W-S-L T-T-Y. That brings us to the main GitHub page. From there, we can go to releases. The newest release is gonna be at the top and we're interested in the binary or the installer. So we'll click on the WSL TTY 1.9.5 install.exe. Uh, Windows Smart Screen Defender has prevented an unrecognized app from starting. Running this app may put your PC at risk. So this is 100% legit. Uh, it's been vetted. You can use websites to verify that. However, since it does kind of circumvent some of Microsoft's protections to allow you to use your computer to do more things, you will get a nice little warning like this. So again, use it at your own risk, but very, very trustworthy. Uh, that being said, you can go read the source code yourself if you absolutely want to. I'm gonna click run anyway. So install Minty terminal for WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Yes. Let it do its thing. Perfect. Okay, leave that website. So now we're on our desktop, we have a WSL terminal. If I open up that, I get a nice little window. So here just to kind of contrast and compare. That is the one that was provided to us by default. And, or sorry, this is the one that was provided to us by default, and this is the one that we just created. Uh, you might be thinking that this one does actually look better, and at the moment you are right. So we're gonna right click and go to options. Uh, so in terminal, first things we want to do is make sure that it's Xterm256 color. Save, close, open it up. Okay, so now we've noticed our colors back. We're seeing green. Go back to options. All right, so we're going to go to foreground. Actually, you know what? There's, there's predefined themes. So if we go to themes here, We'll get a drop down. Personally, I do like Dracula. We we'll click apply. Uh, and of course, if you go down to window, you can set your size. Uh, I'll do that by dragging, however. Set your text. If you Want some good fonts? I do recommend you Google Nerd Fonts. I have nothing good installed on this computer at the moment. All right, click background, foreground. All right, we're good. So here we have WSL TTY. Voila. So that is your Windows Linux subsystem experience. Uh, totally recommend installing it. It will basically help you get better acquainted with Linux. The greatest part about it, however, is if you break anything, you can simply go to the Windows Store, uninstall Ubuntu, reinstall Ubuntu, and you're back to scratch. No need to flash SD cards, uh, no need to do a lot of things. And I hope you enjoyed.